In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to do regular crochet right from scratch. So if you've never done crochet, this is the video for you. And I've done a video like this before that's extremely popular. So this is an update so that the video is clear once again. I'm using a size J hook, which is a 6.0 millimeter. And uh, you will find that in stores. And, and mine has polymer added to the hook uh, for better grip. And mine just happens to be custom designed for Mikey's Mail. And I do have a promotional specialist that actually does custom make crochet hooks and other really funky stuff. And that information is available on my website. So we're going to use the Bernat Softy Chunky line. And this is what we're going to do to get you started. To get started, what we need to do is decide what is your hooking hand and what is your material hand. And usually your, the hand that you write with is actually going to be your hooking hand. Now some people actually hook with their, uh, with their hooks like a pencil and other people do it like they're doing a sword. I've not been able to ever master the one with the pencil, so I've actually do it like the sword. Okay, so there's a lot of people that do it this way. So if you do it the other way, it might be a little harder to understand. So what we need to do is get started by making a chain. So what we're going to do is just wrap in the material around your finger. So this is my material hand. And now using my thumb and my nasty finger, you will hear that in several of my tutorials. Now you're just going to take the back one, so the forward and the back. So take the back one, push it up over the forward one. And now that one becomes the back. So pick up and push over top of your finger just like so. And now you just see me just slightly just pulling the slack on that. I just did that instinctively. And now I want to insert my hook just like so. And now I want to pull it. Now I want to pull it snug. I don't want to pull it too tight. Now let's talk about uh, where we need to position the, uh, the yarn. So what I want you to do is that we use this uh, hand to bring the yarn to the project. And what I want you to do to position it into your hand is just pull the yarn away and lift up your pinky just like so. And now bring the material over your hand just like so and now close your hand. So there's actually two points of tension on your hand. The first one will be actually right in here. So when you're opening and closing your hand, so if it's closed, now you'll see that it's tighter to pull. But when I open it, it's obviously free flowing. So that's the first part of the tension. And the next part of the tension is actually right in the tip of your pointer finger. And so when you lift up your finger, look what happens. It's pulling it up the hook. So it's providing more tension. So tension is not only controlled by one section of the hand, but it's actually controlled by two for even more. So what I want you to do now is just rotate your hand, okay? And now we sometimes use the pointer finger to help stabilize the yarn. So what you have to do is kind of cup your hand so the material is coming out through the bottom, as you can see there. This is called the straggler. I call that the straggler. Probably nobody else does, but that's what I do. You can see the material is coming from the yarn ball through my hand and then out and back through the top side. So let's begin to chain. Now when we're doing a chain, this slip knot does not count as one. Okay, so there's absolutely zero count on this. So if I say I need 10 chaining of 10, this is not one. This is zero. So let's do chain. So what we need to do is the hook. Okay, it has a rotation to it. And we rotate it all the time when we're crocheting. And also we're rotating it or we're pushing it up and down on the hook. And the reason why we're doing that is that the roundness of the hook is what is gauging the thickness of the loop. So every loop will be this size because it's been slid down the same shaft. Now to grab the yarn to make the chain, all you need to do is see the hook area. You need to turn it away from you and this pivot it back and now continue to rotate the hook until it comes under just like so. And now you're ready to grab it and pull it under. And the reason why we pull under is that if you look, really carefully. Let me over exaggerate this. It's like a teardrop. So if I go to rotate the hook up here, you're never going to get it out there. So in order to get it out, you actually have to rotate underneath so it doesn't grab onto anything. So then the wonderful thing about crochet is that if you make a mistake, look, you can just tighten everything back up and re-begin again. So, that, so let's try it again. So pushing back, so rotate backward. Okay, and now rotate in front of you and then pull through. So let's try that again. So rotate back, forward, and under. Back, forward, under. Back, forward, under. Back, forward, under. Back, forward, under. 
back, forward, under. So when they say to do your uh, stitch counting of your chain, you're now actually, these are considered one chain each. So that would be one. So that whatever it was all the way down. So just back, forward, under, back, forward, under. Okay, so now let's uh, go on. If you didn't get that, you can just uh, press back and uh, continue again. So we're gonna just do the standard learning how to double crochet, just like we did in the last video. So we stopped at this particular one. So what I do is see your, fin your nasty finger, so this one here and your thumb, okay? We want to grab onto the very last stitch where this is bad boy is coming out of. Okay. And now we want to chain up three. We always chain up three when we start to do a double crochet going across the line. So let's go. Cool. So what we're going to chain. So that was what we just did is chaining, right? So back, forward, under. So that's one. Back, forward, under. That's two. Back, forward, under is three. And you notice I never let go of that particular chain. If you were to look at instructions and it would say go from the fourth from the hook, exactly where you're grabbing right now is actually the fourth from the hook. So it makes it very easy if you don't let that go that you know exactly where the stitch that you're going into. So let's begin to double crochet. It's the very common stitch of double crochet. So back, forward, and now just shift your hand to where you and, re and reveal that stitch. So you're going to see three different lines. You'll see one, two, and three. We want to do it so that there's two lines on the top and one on the bottom. Okay, and actually I missed completely. Let's try that again. So back forward, one, two, three, four. So we want to get it so that it's two lines on top. So going right in and there will be one on the bottom. Okay, so there's two on the top here, and one on the bottom. Now we want to grab the material and pull it through and this is my famous saying that I have. And then now we pull through two sections of it. So we grab the material and pull through two and grab the material again and pull through two. And that is a double crochet. So let's try that again. So back forward, we go to the next stitch. And how do we know that's the next stitch? Because this is kind of coming down and then back up. So if I was going into here, that would be the same stitch as there. Okay. So I want to go into the very next one available like so. So going in, pulling it through, and so you got two or three left on your hook, so pull through two and two. Okay, let's go into the next stitch. So just back forward, going into the next one. Okay, now that you're in, pull through, pull through two and two. So I'm going to use my normal saying that I would do is if I was doing a faster video. So just going into the next stitch, so Wrap, I call this wrap and through. Okay, and pull it through. And then two and two. Okay, let's go into the next stitch. So wrap and through. Okay, and then pull that through. And then two and two. So wrap, go into the next stitch and through. Pull that through two and two. Wrap and through, two and two. So we just want to continue all the way down the line that we did and you could have gone a lot more or a lot less depending on your speed. So just continue to wrap going into the stitch and through and then two and two. So wrap and in so through, pull through, and then two and two. So wrap and through, two and two. So we're gonna go all the way to the end of the chain where we're gonna, so just keep on going. This is kind of like an exercise class for newbies. And it'll take you a while to get used to the tension that has been provided into your hand. And you will see this finger going up and down as we're working along because it's providing stability. So it's holding the, the chain right now. And then I shift it up where I'm stabilizing it against the back of the needle or the hook. Now I'm lifting it up to provide tension and then pulling it through back down for support and then pull through two and two. 
Now we're on our very last uh, stitch that's available on the line, so it's very it's very obvious. It's only got one more left, so just making sure you got your two on the top and one on the bottom, just like you were all the way along. Pull through, two, and two. So that would be your first line, just like so. Now you should know that in the world of crochet, the spaces in between are actually a significant um, thing that we call posts. So we have the line coming underneath that you see, and then you see a gap in between like a railroad track, and then you see the top. But the things in between are called the posts, and the posts are what help you know where the edge is every time. So what we want to do is turn your material, so just turn it around, so I'm holding on to the yarn at the same time. And now we want to make sure that the posts match each other. So whatever I do on the next line is going to match this line here. So remember what I said in the very beginning, every time you're going to do a double crochet and you're going to start a line, you always chain three. So, so back and through, so push back and through for two and back and two for three. Now this post here, remember I said that these things are called posts, now this uh, chain equals that post, so that's the very edge. So the very next stitch that you would have is actually right here because it's over above this post. So to do that, we're going to just back, so we're going to pull through, and now we're just going to put it into the very next stitch that's right above that post underneath. And there should be two lines that are on top. Okay, pull through two and two. So let's try that again. So back, okay, and going into the next stitch, which is above the next post. Pour in and through and two and two. Try that again. Back, wrap, in, pull through, pull through two and two. Wrap, in and through, pull through, two and two. Wrap, in, through, two, and two. So I told you that there's two lines that are on top, the two strings, and they kind of form like a V shape, just like so, and I gotta make sure I spread it to show you. So there's two lines on the top. Now the, the lines are actually called loops. Okay, so when you're going into a stitch, you're actually grabbing two loops at the same time. But there's patterns where it asks you to grab the front or the back loop, and that's what it's referring to. So I'm just talking to you while I'm crocheting here. So if it asks you to go into the front loop, what it's asking you to do is to separate the loops. Instead of going under both of them, you're only going to grab one. So if they're going to go to the front loop, it's the one closest to your eyes only. And then you'll just grab that and double crochet as normal. Or what you can do if it's asking for the back, then you're just going to go into the over top of the front one going into the back one. So that's called uh, front and back loops. And you never see that, like you won't ever see a pattern say go in the front and back loops at the same time because they're, what they're saying to you is just go into the same stitch. Now the biggest problem that people have is when, when they get to the edge they don't know where the edge will be. And because they put an extra one in or they think they haven't gone far enough. And that's why I'm always a big um, teacher right in the beginning of trying to get you to understand that the posts from the bottom line are to equal the top line. And by no, following that, you know exactly where your edge is because a lot of people tend to finish a little bit too early. And then they realize that their project's starting to finish too early. So they'll finish right here instead of right here. And now because I'm experienced, this is sticking out like a sore thumb, but your crochet may be a lot tighter where it might be to the point where you don't see that at all. So this post equals that, so this here is a post as well, right? That's where we chained. So we have to make sure that we grab that as well. So it's very tempting to go into the gap that is provided just like so. Okay, so I went right into the gap. I didn't separate it by the stitch. And what happens when you do that, you see that? You end up with a hole. So let's take that out again. So what you need to do on the very edge, you have to make sure that you're treating it like a stitch. So you got two on the top, and again, one on the bottom, and treating it like a stitch. Okay, so, and then when we get to the end, we rotate. And again, like any double crochet, what we're going to do is just chain up three. So one, two, and three. Okay, 
So this post equals this chain, so that's your first, and then you see a post underneath, so you know you're getting a nice smooth edge, and now we're just gonna go to your very next stitch, which is above the second post, and just work your way along. Okay, so wrap and through, and then pull through, and then two and two. I never ever mention the, the pull through part on my little saying that I do. So let's uh, try that again. So wrap and through. So I never mention that I pull it back through and then I just say two and two because that actually happens so fast. So you stick it in, you pull through just like really quick and then two and two. So wrap and through and then two and two. See how fast that is? So I find myself just having to say that out loud. It actually slows you down. So continue along like that. This is how you double crochet, and you can do this for any length of uh, afghan that you're looking to make, or a scarf, or anything just simple that is just a flat panel. And this is a great starting tutorial on how to start your material, get started, and do a double crochet.